Okay, Mike Masato here, CEO of Staff Driven Dental, the Dental Road Warrior, returning for episode 28, quick turnaround. Uh, this one, I promised I'd get another one out here as soon as possible, uh, because I realized, uh, looking back on the episodes, we've gone through a lot of content so far, that I cannot believe to date I have not talked about uh, one of the most important things having to do with your practice uh, that is often um, not, oh, not, oh, not emphasized enough are uh, under acknowledged and underappreciated, which is getting paid. How about that? Novel idea that we get paid uh, for what we do. Uh, and the way you start getting paid is you create a culture from day one of training your patients that it's okay to pay for dentistry. I know, shocking concept, right? I mean, I don't understand how the rest of the these uh, capitalist society we work in in America that we go to a business of some sort, uh, whether it's for a product or a service, and we actually pay for it before we leave because if we didn't do that we get arrested <laughs> you know you wouldn't go to a supermarket and walk out with a cart full of groceries and say hey bill me or build this third party somewhere that's in Connecticut uh, and uh, they'll send you uh, you know a watered down amount for these uh, products or services you wouldn't do that but in dentistry that's what happens you know and it's gotten worse because we've kind of ceded the control of our financial future to insurance companies which don't get me started I'm, that's gonna be a separate episode when I uh, do my rant on insurance companies uh, I'll save that for maybe episode 29 all right but for 28 I want to talk about getting paid and we need what we need to really start doing from the get-go is having good policy and uh, one of my best policies of all time that I've ever written and instituted for my dentist uh, is called my zero balance office policy now, you don't know what that means, it sounds good, right? Zero balance office policy sounds fantastic. Uh, it's a great policy that we need to train our staff on implementing, uh, that's where it starts, and then uh, train our patients that this is how finances and how money works in our practice. So zero balance office policy, and I gotta have a whole format for this and how it's all written up and done for you already, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. But um, it goes something like this. I mean, the zero balance office policy that we have patients sign off on, um, is is the, the first line of it says is in, in this practice we run in, in terms of our finances but we operate in a policy of zero balance which means that all of our patients must have a personal cash balance of zero at the time of treatment okay I'm gonna say that again all of our patients must have a personal cash balance of zero at the time of treatment notice I didn't say insurance balances if you're dealing with insurance you let people know we'll wait for that you know we'll accept the assignment and we'll, uh, you know, if you're participating with insurance companies or doing the, the uh, favor of uh, building that out for them, that you will do that. You will basically wait for the insurance, uh, whether their, their personal balance, the portion that they owe. So whether it's $5 as a co-payment or $500, you know, or $5,000, we want that to be zero, you know, at the time of treatment, not in 48 easy installments later on, not when we build them, you know, we find out what the insurance company's gonna do and what's left. You know, we want to know, you know, whatever, we want to figure out what that portion is going to be and work out those details ahead of time. There's an old expression, I've said it before, I'll say it again, take care of the beginning and the end takes care of itself. How do you get massive amounts of, you know, collections and money being owed to you? It's because we don't do this in the beginning and then we're left holding the ball and we're trying to chase people down for money, which as you know, in this day and age especially, it's a losing proposition. So we need to get people to be responsible for their payment. Okay? And, the, and the famous you know, line where patients like to say to you, oh, couldn't you waive my co-payment? You know, couldn't you waive my deductible? Yeah, couldn't I wave your butt at my front door? That's what you really want to say, right? You don't want them doing that because first of all, it's illegal, number one. Number two, it's just bad business. You know, you need to start, if people start learning uh, or taught from the beginning, oh, in this office, they don't collect money. Oh, well, there's nothing out of my pocket. You need to make people responsible about paying something for their health care, whether it's a small portion of whatever they owe, you know, or it's a larger amount of money, okay? So this is something they learn from the get-go. So the first part of the policy is, you know, we run a policy of zero balance, which means all of our patients must have a personal cash balance of zero at the time of treatment. And the second very important line of this policy, which I love, and you're going to love too, is that it says this, uh, in this office, uh, we do not bill patients, we only bill insurance companies. Like that line? You know, it's a fantastic line, right? Created it myself. Uh, so what, what does that mean? We are teaching people, all right, that they will never get a statement in the mail from us. All right? That mail, they, for whatever person, whatever piece of uh, they owe, it's going to be taken care of now or in office. There won't be a statement in the mail uh, coming from them for anything. You know, and that, which is fantastic because now that eliminates all this billing that you do and all the time you spent sending out statements and, and staff time on this and every and all the time we spend, um, you know, uh, chasing down people for money. So it eliminates that by handling an office. All right, now what's going to happen when you say this? All right, obviously 
do do I believe you're not going to get any pushback? Of course you're going to get pushback. It's human nature to object, right? Especially for the existing patients. See, there's two there's two types of patients you're going to have to approach with this policy, right? The new patients, which are easy. I mean, they, they figure this is the way it's always been. They don't know you just changed yesterday uh, when you implement the whole thing. And the existing patients that have us train just the way they like it. Notice how I worded that. Now, the patients that have been coming there for many years that have us trained to do what they want you to do just the way they like it that works for them. And that's great for them, but not great for business necessarily, okay? So we have to get away from doing that and retrain these patients. And, and you're going to get an objections. And you have to know how to handle objections. Oh, doc, I don't understand. Or your front desk is trying to do this. Oh, Mary, I don't understand. What's going on with the doctor? They've always billed me. And, and I, you know, I always pay. You know, you're going to get the lines like that. Come on. Right? Well, what do you say to that? Well, you have to know what to say. And here's an example of what you would say in that situation. All right? I'm going to give a little, little role-playing scripting. You know, Mary, that's an excellent, you know, um, or let's say the, the, the patient, I don't know what her name is. You know, uh, Mary's the front desk person. Let's say it's uh, uh, Mrs. Smith. Okay, Mrs. Smith, that's an excellent question. Uh, we've made a change. Let me explain to you why. All right, notice now how I put this. Right, the, the, and I think I've done this before. The mind works on why. If you give them a good why, so if what comes out of my mouth next is logical, rational, and makes good sense, they're going to go along with it. So if you say to them, you know, we got tired of your lying, thieving, stealing ways, they're not going along with that. All right? Don't you can think that, but just don't say that. Right? You want to make sure you have a uh, uh, a better response than that, um, which which be sounds something like this. You know, in the past, you know, Mrs. Smith, uh, what happened was a lot of money ended up being owed to our office. And as a result, our attention in the office started shifting away from patient care and onto patient finances. So, and we saw that that was destroying our relations with our patients. Uh, you're a great patient of ours, like you said, a great pair. We don't want money to come in the way of our relationship with you and, and our attention shifting away from your health care. So we simply became a zero balance practice. So you can't argue with that, all right? Because the way I worded it, I didn't make her, I, I acknowledge her for being a great patient and a great payer. Uh, I, I gave her the reasons why it's good for her because if you don't work these policies for their benefit, they don't care. And I, what, what, you, you say we're trying to lower administrative costs. They don't care about your administrative costs. We're trying to make Mary's life easier at the front desk. They don't care about Mary's life being easier at the front desk. What they care about it, what's in it for me if I pay you now, as opposed to wait for a bill in the mail. So we're gonna, people know, you know, they don't want money destroying relationships. They don't want you focusing on their money more than their health. They like that. So this isn't the reason why we're doing it right here. If they're doing it already, it's not, the worst they're gonna go is oh, all right. You know, and uh, they'll pay it there. You know, the only ones that are going to give you pushback on this are the ones that are ripping you off now, that have no intention of paying you or haven't been paying you. And you'll notice that right away. If you get pushback from a new patient on this, you know right away there you got a, a, a future criminal in the mix. You know, if they're giving you a hard time about paying. Well, I never paid anywhere else before. It was great. You know, when the other office I used to go to, they never they never billed me, and I never paid them a cent. It was great. I got away with all this free dentistry. Uh, you know, you do, they're just trying to tell you right then and there that they're setting you up for a problem later on. Right? So we have to know you know, the what to say and how to say it in these situations when you get objections because you will get some pushbacks when you make change to policy. But that's okay. You, you don't going to go forward and get anywhere in life unless you change you know, in, the, in the practice and, and put new things in like this in order to get, you know, uh, put our collections. So it's a, it's a very important thing to institute the zero balance office policy. I know there's a lot of good uh, juicy stuff in this little video here and there's more to it. Uh, than that. It's obviously a big process to uh, put these policies in place and the scripting on it and the training on it. I give you a little insight into this one particular policy, but it'll make a massive difference in your practice. If you get this zero balance office policy really going and in, 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 uh, uh, in, in tighten your office, I mean, you can lower, you can first of all eliminate collections on personal balances to zero, which would be a phenomenal. And you know, and uh, and have less all the waste of time you spend in the practice uh, doing this kind of stuff, and not to mention, you know, all the upsets it causes, and um, money hurts relationships, you know, and you you don't want to have money get in the way of your relationship later on, and having a breakdown with money later on. So it's always good to be upfront with people about and honest about your financial policies and about how insurance works or doesn't work in the practice when they come in there. So start with this one, you know, try it out. You know, I, I gave you some little um, you know details about how to go about doing it. And this is part of a, a, a bigger uh, um, procedure of putting in patient policies as a whole, but this is an example of a biggie, the zero balance office policy. All right, so I hope that was useful, helpful, a lot of good stuff in there. And by the way, this stuff works. I don't just make this stuff up in a vacuum on the highway while I'm driving. Uh, this is stuff that we teach our clients all the time. And if it works here in Jersey, it'll work 
anywhere else in this country because trust me, these people are the most difficult people in the world to deal with anywhere. <laughs> if you don't, and if you don't believe me, talk to some of my coaches up there, right? So anyway, uh, episode 28 in the books and uh, 29 to come and I, I think I'll spend some time on that next one like I talked about uh, going over uh, the, what I, my insights and feelings on insurance companies. So stay tuned.